Hi, this is Jim Starkweather, the publisher of Kitmaker Network and Armorama.com, and welcome to another episode of Cracking the Box. Today we've got for you from Meng, the U.S. main battle tank M1A2, SEP, Abrams Tusk 1 and Tusk 2. Uh, this one is a 2-in-1 kit, obviously, having both the uh, rounded uh, Tusk 2 and I believe we'll find that the square Tusk 1 uh, armored side uh, bits are included. Um, this one has full crew hatches, uh, realistic and movable. There are two types of commander cupolas, uh, the CITV and commander's uh, machine guns are rotatable. The main gun has real elevation and depression, something angles, da 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 da. Workable track links and movable suspension are included. Clear lights and periscopes are also included. This is obviously a 135th scale kit. It is TS026 in their uh, lineup. Uh, we've got some stuff on the side here, like the uh, the, the depiction of a M1A2 Septus II, 1st Battalion, 22nd Infantry Regiment, the U.S. Army, Iraq, July 2008. And of course, they have their uh, cooperation with AK Interactive for AK colored paints. I believe there are actually some Meng paints produced by AK also coming out now. And on this side, we've got a uh, 1st Brigade, 4th Infantry of Iraq, 68th Armored Regiment uh, as well depicted. So let's go ahead and crack her open. And uh, we can see a nice uh, plethora of plastic inside. Uh, these come in some nice uh, sealed, closed uh, plastic wrap, but let's go ahead and take a look and see what's in here first, and then I'll go into uh, maybe look at the instructions. Uh, here's the uh, the block type Tusk One armor, so that's definitely in there. Here's the uh, the top and uh, turret sections included in one bag here on top of the hull. Uh, the barrel, which is a two part, um, two piece, half and half barrel. For most of it, I assume maybe the end cap or end piece. Actually, it looks like the end piece is uh, rendered on there, so I yeah, might be wrong about that. Um, and then some mantlets, lots of uh, stowage and other uh, pieces. Road wheels, two sprues, and then we have the Tusk II uh, armor treatment. Uh, for those of you who don't know, the Tusk stands for uh, Tank Urban Survivability Kit, uh, which was added after obviously a lot of tanks got into urban environments and had difficulty with um, not only negotiating tight spaces, but just surviving IED and uh, rocket propelled grenade attacks that didn't disable the tank. Um, here's the commander's coplas. It looks like we've got two different versions there, obviously for the two different versions you were able to do. And uh, the actual lower hull, which is all one piece uh, setup. And some clear, more clear. And the individual track links, which look kind of complex. Looks like we've got pads and the main track bit and some, uh, some guide horns there that all need to be glued on, I'm assuming. And then we have a photo etch, uh, which includes two photo etch sheets, it looks like, and decals. So, and lastly, we have the the Meng instruction manual. Um, so this uh, was in cooperation with Trex. I'm trying to remember is Trex a. I'm not remember. I don't remember what Trex is to be honest. Trex, you need to have more of a more of a. Uh, I don't know, more <laughs> more of a presence. Uh, contact us with information, news, whatever. Um, I've, I mean, I've seen their logo before, but I don't remember what they are. Uh, so forgive me for that. I should should have done my homework and looked that up. But I imagine they're either they've got reference from them, so they may be a research or, or a, a book company, or they may be something else. I'm not not familiar with. Uh, so uh, step one. Oops, I skipped over that, didn't I? Uh, step one just goes into uh, road wheel construction. Uh, suspension, lower hull bits going on, upper hull bits going on. Um, got the uh, hull, main hull external bits. Here's the example of the 
I was going to say that's the tracks, but that's not the tracks. Uh, side skirts, that's the side skirt assembly. Uh, here's the different uh, tusk options. This is showing the tusk 1, and this is the tusk 2, which goes over the tusk 1, I think, doesn't it? Or is it? No, I guess it doesn't. I guess it's a separate, separate affair. Um, and here's the track assembly. So you can see there is a guide horn uh, sprue connected piece, which you can put um, glue them all onto this piece and then I assume it comes off obviously at some phase and then also there is a kit piece uh, for a mold for the pads so then this lays down over the pads so it looks like you can do a section of what one two three four five six at a time six guide horns six track sections and I'm guessing 12 pads so obviously very uh, probably very accurate in terms of the uh, complexity of the track arrangement um, not sure how much any if any flexibility you're going to have there. Uh, don't know how the the actual like turns and bends work. Uh, maybe you just have to bend them to, to fit kind of thing. Um, oh, there is a, a uh, an end piece there for that uh, main barrel. And going forward into the turret section, you can see quite a bit of bits added. Some internal uh, items being shown there. Um, more stowage going on the rear of the turret. Commander's coplas, cuplas, cuplas, copla, cupola. Eh, who cares? You know what I mean. Uh, <laughs> then the final detail bits: the uh, combat identification uh, systems uh, for no friendly fire. It looks like they've got two different types. Although these could be uh, early and late. Uh, I thought these were the later versions that were used, but I might be wrong. Um, and then the final bits going on, the, the turret going on to the main hull and uh, parts overlay at the back here. Um, and some color uh, decal and marking guides. They look very, very good. Some of these I'm sure are the ones that were shown on the box, but if not, it looks like they have one, two, three different versions potentially. Yeah, three different uh, three different versions depicted. I'm not sure these are all, let's see, this is an M1A2 SEP TUS1, a TUS1, and a TUS1. Interesting. So no TUS2 marking option version given. Uh, okay, all right, well that's interesting. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the plastic. So looking at the hull, we do have some, some rubber grommets here for probably some of the suspension bits. Um, hull has some some nice, uh, nice curvatures here with that bottom hull material. Um, the, uh, the very distinct uh, bolt details here. Let's see if I can get in. Uh, hopefully you can see those. But I'll take some photos. There will be some photos towards the end of this review if you are new to my to my channel. Um, so this uh, obviously is nice, a uh, nice detail in here. Um, I like the way they've kind of, you know, just constructed this all in one piece. Very nice. All right, moving on, let's take a look at the upper hull and turret section. So, uh, upper hull, uh, again, nice detail here. The, there's some some uh, some venting up here that's not see-through, obviously. I'm not sure any uh, of these grates go over these. Like, as a, looks like some of them might. But uh, yeah, uh, nice uh, anti-slip surfacing detail. I'm not sure you're going to be able to see that in the cam video camera, but uh, it is there. I'll try to capture that again. It goes extends all the way to the front of the vehicle and around the sides. Uh, another section with some some venting there. Uh, the barrel, which uh, looks pretty nice as a three-piece arrangement, I guess. Um, again, some anti-slip surfacing on that piece there. And we have the uh, turret, which uh, again has anti-slip surfacing on the top, since not on the sides. Um, looks nice, looks very nice. Typical Ming production quality. All very good. Let's go ahead and take a look at this sheet with some of the cupolas. Does not want to come out. Come out, come out. Um, again, there's uh, some of this anti-slip surfacing on these parts here, 
they believe these are uh, sections on the back of the turret. Uh, the commander's cupola, which um, looks very similar. It must be some, oh, there's some slight differences there with the ribbing. Uh, there's some additional support there for something. 50 cal machine gun with ammo inside, and here's the actual 50 cal itself. Uh, again, this all looks good. No production issues noted. I'll skip a bit actually and uh, go right to the tracks after this piece. But um, here's some of the uh, tow cables. Um, interesting. Um, some of those side bits. Uh, some plastic grills, which are kind of cool. And uh, just a lot of this is some of the suspension parts. I'm not sure these are the combat, the newer combat identification panels. I know they have the vented louver approach, but I might be wrong about that. Uh, there's a uh, some kind of saw saw machine gun, I think, right? Right, right. You guys can confirm. No, no, that was the M. Whatever. M two o one. It's new. <laughs> I just know I always suck at them in first person shooters. <laughs> Oh, I was going to go on the tracks, but anyways, we'll take a look at the uh, the Tusk th uh, Tusk Two armor. Uh, here's uh, some of the uh, uh, that that piece looks odd. Like a, I didn't think they had a protected gunner. No, I guess they do. Okay, yeah. so there's a 50 cal protected uh, uh, gun area there with uh, armored glass, and uh, here's these pieces are going to go over these, obviously, but that's. Uh, Pretty much how those work. All right, let me go ahead and uh, let's, let's take a look at those track setup. It's an M1 Abrams, you know they're they're only sexy when they're completed and done. <laughs> all right, so we'll just take, pull out one of these. Oh, actually, let me pull out all set and see if there's okay. So each one is the same. And it has uh, that tool uh, bit that's noted noted in the instructions here to lay the uh, the pads in. See some of the pads vary. They've got some kind of bolt arrangement or something in there securing it. Uh, and here's the uh, these are the pieces you're going to cut off to create the six guide horn setup to then glue into these pieces. Um, which I assume you want to leave these on the sprue and then cut them off post putting those on there. Now some of these are actually, I can see they've already come loose, so they're very lightly connected there. Um, but that's good. Uh, so yeah, it looks like a, it looks like they put some thought into this. I, I think I'll, I'll give, give Meng a, a good passing grade on creating complex yet accurate tracks. I mean, you guys who know the tracks the best can probably comment on their accuracy, but, uh, but yeah, that seems like a, a one way to do it without um, making them too simple and then therefore not really accurate. All right, let's quickly move on with some of these last bits of the beige plastic. I want to make this review too long or this preview unboxing, whatever you want to call it. Uh, some of those suspension bits again for the uh, main drive of uh, road wheels. Drive wheels, I almost said, but that's not right. Um, and it looks like there's some really nice detail with these. Again, I'll try to capture these in photos a little bit better than I can get them on the video camera, but uh, yeah, they look good. Interesting on the sprocket wheels, they've gone with these kind of double connection points off of the main sprue, but I guess it probably will be easier to snip them and not get too much end. Uh, easier to clean them up on the sides maybe of those points rather than on the ends, that's probably what they were thinking. Uh, same piece, obviously, and last couple of large sprue sheets here. We will be passing these over to uh, a reviewer for for build review slash build feature blog, whatever they want to request. Uh, so if you're interested in that, please let us know. There haven't been assigned yet. We probably will wait a little bit because. Uh, I want to get this video out for one thing, but um, but yeah, we want to match it up with the best possible uh, reviewer. Some of the hatches here, they look nice. Um, 
definitely seeing some some additional texturing on some pieces. So I'm trying to feel which ones actually have it and which one my eyes are not uh, quite doing justice. I have to start wearing my optifizers or something to do these so I can actually see the. A lot of times I'll take the photos and I'm like, oh wow, I didn't see that. <laughs> the photos definitely show more than the naked eye can see sometimes. All right, so there's the standard Tusk One side armor. Uh, and I believe some, these are some of the connections, or is that just the side skirts? I think that either might just be the side skirts. And um, this is that, I think this is the lower hull armor piece that goes below the um, hull to give it an additional uh, kind of a, a spaced armor effect. So that looks all good. All right, well, that just leaves the photo etch and the clear and then the uh, decals. We take a look at those. Again, with the photo etch, it looks like we've got a lot of grills um, and uh, some other small um, thin, thin covers and things like that. And this is the other one. And then the decals, it's a very, very small decal sheet, but it does have some unit markings like these. Um, I'm guessing for maybe the uh, M1A2 Tusk 2. Um, you're going to have to go aftermarket based on what the instructions at least were, uh, seem to be showing. Um, but yeah, if you, can, if you noted, noted anything or have the kit already and, and know that's not true, then yeah, comment in, the, comment in the comments area and let me know. Um, but yeah, it looked like they were just sticking with Tusk 1 uh, versions. Uh, some really thick solid armored glass here for some of those protected areas, like the M50 shield. And uh, same thing here, I think I'm going to take a set of it's a double bag, but I'll take a photo of that. I think that actually is for the, uh, for the uh, main machine gun. Anyway, so uh, the 50 cal. Uh, that covers the unboxing portion. Let's go ahead and take a look at those photos and then come back and conclude.
All right, well, I hope you enjoyed the um, unboxing of the uh, and some of those photos of the new Mang M1A2 Abrams Tusk 1 and 2 SEP, which um, I believe is just is pretty much just out now, so you can check for it in your local stores or online, and you should be able to find it. Um, we uh, appreciate uh, getting this copy from Mang, and I think this looks like it's going to be a pretty good um, M1 Abrams kit just to build. Looks uh, good on the tracks, good on the details, uh, you know, lots of lots of nice stuff there that we were in in the past relying on a lot of aftermarket companies to provide uh, for some of these tusk uh, updates and so forth but um yeah looks good and uh, we will uh hopefully see you next time make sure to leave a comment or a like if you can and uh, uh let us know your feedback on the kit and if you're building one and and what your expectations are and we will see you next time on cracking the box mm -hmm.